Good evening. I call this planning commission to, uh, meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. Roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Terrazas Baxter. Present. Commissioner Rivera. Present. And Chairperson Harvey. Present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Vice Chair Rivera, would you lead us, please? Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? I'm Chairperson, there are no adjustments to the agenda. Thank you. Item B1, public appearances, matters not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to address the Planning Commission concerning any item not appearing on the agenda and within the Commission's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the Chairperson. And at that time, state your name and address for the record. The Chairperson reserves the right to place a time limit on each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the commission in writing. Does anybody have any, any matters not appearing on the agenda that they'd like to come forth and speak about? No, okay. Continuing on uh, to item C, the consent calendar, consent agenda. Yes, Madam Chairperson, you have one item on your consent agenda okay. related to approval of minutes. Yes. Uh, and so if indeed that, that is a desire of the commission to approve the minutes, then a, a motion would be in order. After review of the, the minutes, I would like to request a change to page two of the minutes on item D1. Uh, reorganiza reorganization of Planning Commission uh, to revise where it says Commissioner Rivera to serve as chairperson and change that to Commissioner Rivera to serve as vice chairperson. I'll make a motion to approve the consent uh, with that amendment in the minutes to the minutes. Second that. Roll call. Commissioner oh, okay. Terrazas Baxter? Yes. Uh, Vice Chairperson Rivera? Yes. Uh, Chairperson Harvey? Yes. Motion passes three to zero. Okay. Thank you. Moving on, item D, special presentation. Uh, SB 1383 Statewide Mandatory Organic Waste Collection Presentation. Hi. Hello. Good evening, Commissioner. Um, community Development staff is here to present SB 1383. My name is Yvonne Cordero. I'm a city planner, and we have David Ramirez. He's our code enforcement officer. Um, directly working with this mandate is Ariel Flores. Um, she's our new organic waste monitor. She could not be with us tonight. Um, so SB 1383, the state of California adopted Senate Bill 1383, three statewide mandatory organic waste collection to divert organic waste from our landfills as they've concluded that about 40% of what we discard in landfills is organic waste. Effective January 1st of 2022, SB 1383 established statewide greenhouse gas emission reduction goals. So when or organic material decomp decomposes in our landfill, it produces greenhouse gases. SB 1383's goal is to reduce the amount of organic material disposed in landfills by 75% by the year of 2025, compared to 2014 levels. By composting organic materials, greenhouse gas production significantly reduces SB 1383 Oh, reduces period. 
1383 also established a goal to divert 20% of the edible food currently disposed in landfills. By composting organic materials and recovering edible food, we can all do our part to slow climate change. Um, these photos are example of, examples of the organic waste that can be di diverted from our landfills and recovered for human consumption with orga organic recovery programs such as SB 1383. On the left, we have a perfectly good produce uh, that previously was sent to the landfills. Um, now they're required to be sent to um, organizations such as the Ivy Food Bank. And on the right, we have a composting pile. As you can see, there's organic waste mixed in with the yard waste and the soil um, to make compost. So who is impacted? We're all impacted. All persons and entities that generate organic materials will be impacted. Everyone is required to divert their organic materials from their landfill trash by separating them and placing them in the organics container, which is also the yard waste container. In addition, certain entities that provide food will be required to donate any excess food to agencies, as I mentioned, like the Food Bank for Human cons Consumption. Residents, um, those living in single family homes and multifamily apartment complexes um, are required to divert their organic waste. Um, commercial entities, businesses, for-profit and non-profit organizations, government offices and agencies and industrial facilities also um, are mandated to divert all their organic waste, education agencies, and non-local entities, such as schools, community colleges, and universities. Um, the requirements. Requirements for residents will have to, um, residents will have to properly separate the recycling and organics from their garbage and have regular curbside collection services. Commercial businesses, are also required to subscribe to the organics collection service, donate the maximum amount of excess edible food, provide annual educational information to tenants and staff, periodically inspect containers and inform employees of any contamination. Education agencies and non-local entities are required to subscribe to the, agent, to the organics collection service as well, provide organics collection containers, periodically inspect the recycling and organics containers for contamination and provide information and education to employees on how to prevent the generation of organic materials. Um, waivers were, were available for our commercial businesses. Um, Non-local entities and education agencies were also ex exempted from some or all of the requirements if they provided documentation or evidence to support that minimal organic material is generated on site or if they had physical space constraints. The City of Imperial, along with Republic Services, identified 82 commercial businesses and two multifamily complexes within the city that were granted a de minimis waiver to comply with the mandate. They were exempt from, from participating. Okay, so what is staff doing? The city uh, ratified Ordinance 812 on January 5, 2022 to establish the mandatory organic waste disposal reduction program within the city. The city has also entered into a joint powers agreement with IVRMA to jointly implement programs and deliver recycling services and education within Imperial County. As a member of the, of the IVRMA Technical Advisory Committee, the city has assisted in purchasing a reporting software to submit regional reports to CalRecycle that will quantify our compliance and progress. We have also procured a capacity planning consultant to formulate a regional capacity plan that will estimate organic waste disposal and the amount of new or expanded capacity that will be needed for our region. In 2022, the Community Development Department applied for and was awarded approximately $30,000 in CalRecycle grant funds for education, outreach, and enforcement. With those funds, we purchased two tablets for field inspections and on-site reporting, two desk scanners, 
safety equipment, and 600 compost pails and compostable liners that our department has been distributing at city events and at our office. We have formulated a Let's Talk Trash campaign to educate residents of the mandate and prepare them for January 2024, when staff and Republic Services will be actively monitoring residential organic waste containers. The campaign is being distributed via email to all accounts that have registered their email address with the city on the city's website and on all our social media platforms. David, our code enforcement officer and Ariel, our newly hired organic waste monitor, will be issuing courtesy notices, educating residents and commercial businesses, and eventually start issuing citations for non-compliant residents. It is not the city's intention to fine our residents or commercial businesses, but to educate and meet the mandate's goals. Um, here we have photos of um, me and um, Republic Services. Her name is Sylvia. We, um, we participate in city events, handing out our compost pails. Uh, the middle photo is an example of what we are distributing to our residents via social media and email. And the photo on the right um, is a field trip that Tony from our parts um, department and I took to report the Republic Services composting facility. As you can see, there's a lot of contamination in those piles and those piles have been, been deemed unusable because of the plastics. Plastics are not allowed. Um, another facet of this bill is procurement. Uh, cities and counties are required to procure products for use or give away of recovered organic waste products to meet our annual procurement target based on population. The City of Imperial's 2021 population estimate of 20,289 requires us to procure 1,623 tons of reco recovered organic waste products. This can include mulch, compost, renewable gas from anaerobic digestion, or from biomass conversion. Um, just as an example, in 2022, our Parks Department purchased 22.22 cubic yards of compost for our city parks, uh, which is not even close to what we need to be. A near a thousand. No. Yes, we have tons to go. What our department is doing to assist in meeting our procurement target is including um, in the conditions of approval for our projects to include um, mulch and compost in our, all our developments. And in doing so, that will help us. They, they need to purchase from a certified Cal Recycle facility um, in the name of the city of Imperial for it to count towards our procurement target. Question. I'm going to sure. Okay. The question is dealing with uh, compost matter. Is it only uh, from uh, what is supposed to be put to the side as far as um, fruits, vegetables, uh, clippings, whatever that goes in the green trash can? Or um, can you substitute to get credit for the city of Imperial manure compost? would be organics. Um, manure is not considered um, to be... Okay, because the state has a healthy soils program, and farmers down here participate mm -hmm. in it. So, like, I was just thinking maybe a farmer could get... He's going to buy it anyway under that program and give you guys the credit. Yes, that is the intention. Um, hopefully our local farmers will be purchasing compost um, and giving us the credit, uh, but I'm not sure it would uh, be manure compost would yeah, that's what they're using under healthy soils down here that they get it from the feedlots that are analyzed to meet a certain level <coughs> and um but they're not organic you know they're turned and everything to meet the state's requirement of that healthy soils program a recycle is requiring us to um requiring whoever purchases compost to purchase from us Cal Recycle certified now permitted. These are from Cal, okay. Cal Recycle. They have to have a okay. certification. Okay. Yeah, I'm just telling I'll you that that's yeah. something to look into that you could just have a farmer say, okay, I'll give you guys a credit. Right. So when it, that it is actually enforced, then, um, yeah, we will be 
reaching out to we'll the research that. I know exactly HSPs. what you're saying. Yeah, 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 to determine whether or not they can get credit for right. that under this yeah. program. Right, we'll uh -huh. look. Okay. So this concludes my portion. Uh, we have David who will um, talk about his enforcement. Can I, I still have a few questions. Enforcement, when are you guys going to start going and searching out green trash cans, black that, trash cans? That would be in uh, my next uh, slides. I'm sorry? That would be in my next slides. Uh, Okay, and notices and invoices. I, I didn't hear you say you're including that. You're on social media. You're on um, the website. How about it being included in the invoices that go out on the bill? I did uh, do a bill insertion. Yeah. However, um, it proved to be very expensive. So we opted for email, email distribution. Well, um, this is why our enforcement division will be going out educating our residents. Put a notice on there. True. That's a good That's idea. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Either way, eventually they will hear from enforcement. Um, they will just, uh, give them a courtesy notice. On the door. Yes. Good evening. Uh, I'm here to talk uh, about the SB 1383 enforcement. In September 2023, the city of Imperial hired Ariel Flores, our part time organic waste monitor. Her purpose is to focus on organic waste monitoring, education, and enforcement. Code Enforcement Division will determine if violations have occurred, implement enforcement actions, and determine if compliance standards are met in accordance with Ordinance 812. That is a picture of our organic monitor checking one of our local businesses' organic uh, container. <clears throat> Education period started January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2028. Businesses notifications began June, June 2022 and enforcement began September of 2023. Residents notifications began March 2022 and enforcement will begin January 2024. Civil penalties for non-compliance will begin July 1st of 2024. First violation, written warning, second violation, $100 to $200 per violation. Third and subsequent violations, 250 to 500 per violation. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Are those um, the same for both residential and commercial? Yes. They, they're the same? They're the same. Okay. And that will conclude our presentation. Uh, yes. Procuring organic material, who's paying for that? Where is it in the budget? Through fines, they're going to support it, like the ticket riders on the road, Jack in a Box. Burden is uh, placed on the city for the costs of procuring either compost or any type of organic manure. Uh, well, they haven't started enforcing that, so we have yet to um, determine where those funds will be coming from. I, I'm uh, our, our budget, budget schedule will start and is currently planned to start in, in January. I, I gather my sense of this is that it, it's a it's a work in, in progress. I, I as I understand uh, uh, the responsibility of the of businesses that are not exempt and residences is basically to separate things. And then our, our hauler is going to be responsible for compiling all this. As I, as I was listening to the presentation, I, there are some obvious things that come to my mind. Uh, I, you know, the, they mentioned food bank as being one potential place where edible food could be taken. Um, that, that I would think there's a huge cost associated with collecting it. So if everybody takes their edible food to the food bank, somebody has to 
unload it, sort it, separate it, store it, and and, and package it in a way that uh, it can be distributed. So, uh, and all of uh, and that I, I know very early on in the process, uh, the uh, executive director of the food bank expressed concern about their ability to manage that without hiring a lot of additional staff and having a lot of additional costs. So I, th I think the concern from our staff is to make sure that people are, are, are doing the proper separation. Uh, and then, and then it falls to our, uh, uh, at this point, Republic is our, uh, is our waste hauler to collect it and, and, and management. All that comes at a cost. As you'll recall, the city has already implemented, uh, one, one part of, of the, of the recycling effort. And I think, was that strictly the commercial, the 45? That was just for the commercial, right? That was for the commercial. And so at this point, we, have, we haven't had any increase to residential, right? And, and I know there's discussion amongst the cities about whether that process is requiring the 218, right? We have notice a hearing and then a protest. Uh, to the extent that it's mandated by law, it, it may not. We may not have to go through that. But query: What happens if we do go through that process and there's a majority protest? Uh, then you can't implement the fee. Cal Recycle probably isn't going to be too sympathetic if we say, "Well, the citizens didn't approve the fee, so we can't do it." I don't. I don't think that'll get us very far. Uh, so th there's there's some distance between where we sit today and and what the goals of the law are. I know Cal Cities, which is kind of the uh, uh, statewide organization of, of cities, they, they, they uh, there was an effort uh, by Cal Cities on, the, on behalf of cities to get a more realistic schedule associated with all of this. And, and it was basically, they got zero traction with the state in terms of trying to come up with a uh, more what we think is going to be a more realistic schedule uh, because there's a lot of moving parts to this. It seems to me that even if the citizens do what they're supposed to do in separating things, what happens to it after that um, is, is a completely separate discussion and where it ends up, right? If, if food bank turns out to be the only place I can't imagine how much a product seven cities in the unincorporated area are going to generate. So I think it's, it could be a huge uh, undertaking uh, for some for some entity like the food bank. You so, should. So, so you're saying that we separate our, our food in our house into the green trash can instead of throwing it in the black trash can. Do that. You're saying that that. They're going to put that in the food bank? No. No, right. I think so basically what you're talking about in terms of the end of food is more like, yeah, like Vons, grocery stores. Okay. So then the next point is, are they saying that the food, like the scraps, you know, you peel your potatoes, uh, there's not a location to dump that any longer? Green trash can. Green trash can. There's no longer a place for green trash can? Yes. No, no, I'm saying for it to be, uh, you're saying that the question was where's the location for this recycled material, which is the green trash can. Is there no longer well, there's a going to be, to basically, it's, it, there's going to be, there's going to be three places. You're going to have your trash. No, no, I'm talking about when they come and pick it up. Right. There's going to be, you're going to have, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed that our market days, we've been distributing a little organic. And so that, that will be collected as well. Wouldn't you just dump it in the th green trash can? So oh, we gotta put that little can on the curb also. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm not sure about the you do. Oh, that's gonna happen. You do uh you put it you deposit it into your yard waste, which is the green uh, container. Okay. And it mixes in and then it's taken to, as you can see in the picture, to Copper Mountain in, in Arizona to be composted. Okay. Got it. Okay. That goes towards the green No. The city has to uh, so what the residences and commercial businesses provide 
and is hauled eventually, that doesn't go towards the tonnage that you're required to procure? We're required to compost, to send this to composting. In addition, we need to procure. It's going to raise our rates, bottom line. Unfortunately. Um, yeah. It's going to raise our rates so we can create more government people to run around so we can say we got low unemployment. Yeah. Um, question, just so I can kind of understand this since this is coming around in a couple of months. And I know it's something new, so there's always a lot of kinks and nothing's perfect, perfect up front. Um, but for the enforcement part on like the residential side, just because I'm trying to think ahead of like residents coming forward and asking questions, who physically is going to be checking that? Is it your organic monitor? And would that person be just going out on the days like when the, the trash bins are pulled out in front of the house and then opening them up and physically checking them? That is correct. Yes. Okay. And then, and obviously he or she will be dressed in city attire, so we'll know it's not just someone going through the trash. Okay. It's a new um, mandate Yeah. to all jurisdictions. Yeah. It's not perfect, and we're just doing no, our part. No, you guys are just carrying out because Correct. you're not trying, <laughs> trying to have the city not get a ticket. Yes. Top down. Any other questions? Um, okay, so January, Dennis, you guys start the budget process, and you're going to have to have to budget a line item in order to buy one ton, or is it ten, a thousand tons? Thousand six hundred forty-three. Sixteen hundred tons of compost. So it'll take away from parks, other programs. Because then you got to figure out how to get rid of it, right? You get to buy it, but then you got to get rid of it. A lot of cities are giving it away to residents. Okay. And the, the numbers are being looked at. Um, jurisdictions have complained that the amount they, we need to procure is exorbitant. So hopefully Good. they'll lower the, the requirements. Ramping up. Correct. There's no further questions. I, I have compost bins, if anyone would like to uh -huh. take one. Is, uh, I gave it. Yes. Us at another yes. Last year sometime, yes. Uh, I think the, the poignant questions aren't necessarily directed at just you or the staff. It's just the frustrations. And, and this is just, I assume, just the tip of the iceberg. Everybody was laugh was was smiling and, and laughing about the, the little compost pills uh, that you guys have been giving over the last year and a half. Um, but as we see it about to take into effect and, and your staff coming out to check the trash cans, um, I think the, the reality of it uh, is about to kick in. And then eventually, um, here shortly down the line, um, the increase in the fees. Um, as for, you know, sending this this food to the um to the food bank i mean we, we i don't know if we've considered you know the quality of what we would be what we would be taking down there uh, the expiration how long has it already been sitting um, contamination all these things that now the the food bank is going to have to take into consideration you know and then depending on the quantities again it's it's neither here or there at this point at this juncture um but it just creates more problems uh, and that's just for the food bank um, and for the folks at home is getting them. I mean, I know I'm sure the, the city staff could go on any day and just check the, the green can right now as is, the black can and the blue can. And I'm sure everything's oh, mingled. Yeah, mingled. So, I mean, I, I can't even imagine what the, what we're about to face with this. And that's why um, we've been doing this. It's for education pre in preparation for January when we have to enforce this. Has you got any any additional interest um, at the at the uh, the fairs at the um, signature events yet? Yes, we okay. do have uh, people that know about it. People mm -hmm. that have no clue but are willing to 
take the compost pail and practice recycling. I ask, aside from the signature events, are there other community events that maybe like school board meetings or um, association meetings, like uh, you have Rotary that meets here in Imperial frequently just with different um, Um, I have not. I am usually the one out there. Um, as you know, I was out for a couple of months, so I have not been doing it. Um, however, Sylvia uh, from Republic Services, um, she, we will be going out to the schools and starting with them. So, and that's a big contributor to organic waste. It's a I lot think of waste. if you go like to the PTA meetings or PTG meetings, as um, as was suggested, and even like at the service clubs, um, that could help to spread it. It's just a suggestion. I know you're one person, and uh, you're being spread thinner than jam on a 10-foot loaf of bread. Okay? But uh, that's a way to get it to, so the people can hear about it. Uh, this is going to be a training process. And um, I know you say one-time uh, warning. But I think you might have, uh, gosh, what was it, the, the uh, Beauty and the Beast where the city folks are storming the castle, you know, <laughs> coming with their torches. Remember that Walt Disney program? Yeah, so we need to get the word out. I think that's more because it's a lifestyle change. Right. Yeah. All of us are used to a certain lifestyle. It comes down to a lifestyle change. So it is going to take time for people to understand the change as well. And and as you know, uh, you know, as far as local government, you're going to start hearing the complaints once people start getting written notices, and you're going to start getting all the calls, and then that's when all the questions are going to come. What do you guys do to inform us? But that's why it's good to document everything you're doing also, um, so that way you can share those opportunities that you provided as far as education, but it's good to understanding uh, you have limitations and time is limited as well. Um, but yeah, as much as possible. And you guys will be the dark board. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to fill up those seats here in the next couple of months? <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to practice. I forget at times when I'm peering at the table. Same here. <laughs> That's, That's why the compost pails make, make it easier. You just set them in your kitchen, and as you're cooking, you just deposit them in there. It's a good reminder. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think our, our best our best bet down the road is is you starting and getting out there in the in the schools and getting the kids to to start to get in that habit. Um, the, your the biggest struggle, obviously, with with you know the heads of the households. Um, but with the kids, I mean, it, it worked in the 90s and the 80s, getting kids to separate plastic and aluminum and whatnot. And, you know, at least we, we recognize that. Um, but, yeah, it's we're, we're going to fill up those seats here in the next 10 months, I'm afraid. Yeah, thank you. Very helpful. I wish you the best and all of that. And it's going to be a, a big thing. Big overtaking, undertaking. Wow. Um, oh. Moving on to item E, new business, uh, discussion, action, uh, E1. Similar land use determination for a recycling facility within the general industrial zone. And I'll um, open the public hearing, 705. It is not a public oh, hearing. Sorry. Gosh. This is just. Um, oh. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Jose Moises Carballo submitted an application for a for connection recycling his business, uh, proposed to be located at 504 Industry Way. Upon staff's initial application review, recycling facilities are not listed as a permitted land use within the general industrial zone. Staff recommends that Planning Commission determines the recycling facilities use be permitted as a similar land use under the manufacturing classification within the City of Imperial's 
general industrial zones permitted land uses as it lists the compo compounding, assembly, or treatment of articles or merchandise for glass or metals and plastics. Um, Mr. Caballo is here if you have any questions regarding his business or what he intends to do. Hi, good evening. We're coming. Is there anything that you'd like to add to what staff has already described in regards to to your oh, project? Well, uh, it's a new place. I mean, um, I was looking through uh, a specific space between El Centro City and Imperial City. Because I know Imperial City has only one recycle center by the gas station out on the street. And the, the other one is uh, located by 111 that I used to work for them for six years. So people that doesn't have cars, they struggle to travel all the way over there or all the way to the Imperial City. Uh, and the location that we found, it's, I think is some little bit, you know, accessible for people that has no vehicles or, you know, like residential areas are more near the area. And which only we're gonna be recycling beverage containers. Um, there's a, it's not a lot of money uh, doing recycling, but it's some constant money that goes, you know, well, it's gonna be, um, we're gonna do the recycling and, and by industry way, and everything's gonna be taken out to SA Recycling which they have a processor license. So they will pay back the money to us and then we're gonna keep uh, recycling. Um, public recycling and we can offer also to schools, uh, business, restaurants, anyone who handles, let's say, um, even bars, you know, glass. Uh, we can deliver some containers and pick up the containers segregated by yourself and give the school or the business some money back. Go ahead. Paul, um, the city has the blue container, okay? And in that blue container goes the recyclables, right? Okay. And, and I understood I that, that, I'm just talking from a residential standpoint, standpoint. That helps to offset some of the charge that shows up on my monthly bill for trash, sewer, and water. Okay. So if people take it, don't put it in the blue trash can, and they take it to you, is it going to end up increasing our rates? Does the, recycle, does the trash people give some kind of uh, consideration for getting recyclables and the overall rate they charge the city, so it passes down to residents? As I recall, our, our contract does not have a specific formula mm -hmm. associated with that. Uh, so to the extent there are recyclables and that the, and the trash company can recover those, um, uh, that, that might well factor in when it comes time for rates, but there isn't a specific formula. Right so, line. yeah, so um, uh, that, that f there isn't a specific uh, way to calculate how much the rate might go up or down. Well, they're figuring out when they contract with the city. I'm sorry? It's not specified line item when the contract is negotiated or presented to the city. It, it has not been. Uh, to my knowledge. That, this that's what I understood, that right. there's some kind of offset there. So, let's, let's get, get El Centro Calexico to <laughs> bring their <laughs> stuff to your business so it doesn't affect, affect Imperial. <laughs> I'm saying that's a possibility, okay? okay. From your business model, okay? okay? Okay. The second question I have is industry weight. That's right off of Imperial. Is it right on the way to FedEx? Or is it the first street in that industrial center? It's next to... Um, Who's your neighbor? Next to 413. The, the neighbor will be uh, the heavy heaters, I think, or some CrossFit center? Yeah, it's CrossFit. Um, it's down from the uh, immigration court, and down then, from the um, some of those uh, federal buildings down there. Um, That's La Bruchery. Uh, La Bruchery and, uh, 
and Aiton right. are the main streets in, in that area. Right, and therefore you're going south on, you're going north on La Boucherie, and you turn off on Industry Way. And, and then at the end is the bottle company. Which what is, company? Cumex. Uh, uh, it's at the end of the corner. All right. Uh, oh yeah, Gloria. Because I'm looking and at your picture that's in here. I'm just trying to get familiar with. But next to us is, is some, some um, um, oil, oil company. company. Okay. Either. Something related to gasoline or oil. Right, I see. So, uh, you're going to keep it clean? Like, there's not going to be flying papers or whatever when the wind kicks up? All the time. Uh, I used to work for SA Recycling for six years, and we never get a violation or nothing. When I was, I was in charge of the warehouse where we received the, all the product. So, um, we're not going to buy anything like batteries or oil, nothing that contains hazardous materials. We're only going to focus on beverage containers, and that's it. Only glass, plastic, and aluminum. Um, Handling any cardboard? No. No, that will be a, we will, will be require a lot of space or special equipment to compact and make bales. So, and it's a fire hazard also. So you were the, you were the manager over there at the SA? The warehouse manager. You were the warehouse manager? Yes. And now here you're the owner? The owner. The owner. Okay. Um, she already hit on, on my question. My question was uh, how long do you intend to store this stuff there? Uh, I see here uh, it's, it, it does point out how long do you intend to for the material? Yeah, it's good. it will be um, only Sunday because uh, uh, the plan is just get us much material we can on one day and resell it back the same day. So there will be no material accumulation in that warehouse. Doing a twenty-four hour turnaround. Yeah, except for the glass. The glass we can store because I mean the glass we will have a. Uh, uh, metal bins, containers, uh, which not a people have too much glass. It's just a few bottles. So that one may take longer to you know to, to resell it. But um, besides plastic and aluminum, that will be a daily uh, a resale. How long do you guys? How long do you intend? How high do you intend to stack this stuff? The floor level. Floor level. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. And everything else is plastic. You turn it around within 24 hours. Uh, who oversees this? Is this a county thing? Anybody come check this out? I mean, uh, besides a violation of some sort. Well, uh, I already have the uh, car recycle license to get it uh, to get it started. Um, <coughs> I just need the plates and get I'm ready. Just, and, um, and besides that, I mean, I know that the county area I need to, you know, the. Department of Weight and Measures. They have to inspect the, the scale, but mostly we're we're ready. All the right answers. I'm just putting it on the record that yeah, we can run it you, tomorrow. You got it all. You got it all <laughs> dialed in, and um, yeah, I'd rather have him have another business in uh, in Imperial than send it to send you to El Centro. So, and it's good. I mean, uh, El, El Centro uh, is a big city, but uh, Imperial it, it's between. Those cities, sorry. We got uh, you right here. Yeah. You're already here. Um, Wild Center, I mean, Imperial's better. <laughs> so besides yourself, how many people are you going to have uh, working for you? I'm not committing you to hire, but maybe you have a goal. Uh, we're going to start with a crew, I think, uh, of three people and myself. I'm not included as, you know, as an employee, but I will be... Uh, Training them and teaching me how to uh, weigh the materials. Um, most important, how to teach the customers how to, how to be ready to sort, to have the materials already sorted. Um, so it's going to be uh, three people, the cashier, a weight master, and uh, labor, and, and me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How 
big are the vehicles that you intend to move your your material in and out? Was it a pickup or small? It's a it's a, a Chevy Silverado okay. Raider cab, okay. just with a trailer. Okay. Um, not big, sixteen feet trailer. I don't need. I'm satisfied. Answered everything. Not a public hearing, so we're we're still moving. Uh, I'll motion to approve to adopt the resolution a PC. 2023-10. I'll second that. Roll call. Um, and before I call roll call, I, I, I neglected to indicate that uh, Commissioner Abadi entered the meeting at 640 and before this matter was called. And so uh, roll call on, on the motion, Commissioner Abadi. Roll call? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Terrazas Baxter. Vice Chairperson Rivera? Yes. And Chairperson Hart? It's not working. Yes. yes. Motion carries 4 0. And um, do we close the Planning Commission to move on to traffic? I'm adjourning the meeting. I'm adjourning. I'm going to adjourn the Planning Commission meeting at 7.18 p.m. And uh, we will continue with the uh, Traffic Commission meeting at 7.18 p.m. The, uh, the item for review is uh, F1, removal of pedestrian crosswalk on North Imperial Avenue between Barioni Boulevard and 9th Street. Hello, Commissioners. My name is Carla. I'm with Community Development Department. Um, so an evaluation of the crosswalk on North Imperial Avenue between Barioni Boulevard and 9th Street has been requested to formulate possible mitigation measures regarding the rising safety concerns for pedestrians using the designated crosswalk. The ideal mitigation is the removal of existing crosswalk in its entirety. The existing pedestrian crosswalk presents many safety apprehensions the placement of the pedestrian crosswalk has visibility concerns. There is a major blind spot when vehicles in the parking spots directly in front of Keys Bargain on the west side of Imperial Avenue. For drivers moving southbound, the pedestrian is not visible to drivers until they are approximately 20 feet into the crosswalk. The Development Review Committee has assessed the crosswalk on North Imperial Avenue, and based on the concerns expressed, the removal of the crosswalk on North Imperial between Barioni Boulevard and 9th Street may provide and fulfill the sought after traffic safety mitigation. You can refer to Exhibit A for additional feedback from the surrounding businesses. The Development Review Committee has based the recommendation on the following guidelines from the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, otherwise known as MUTCD. Um, you can review Section SB.18, um, labeled crosswalks mark Crosswalk Markings of the MUTCD and it states the following. Crosswalk markings provide guidelines for pedestrians who are crossing roadways by defining and def delineating paths on approaches to and within signalized intersections on approaches to other intersections where traffic stops. So staff findings are as follows. The MUTC, MUTC defines crosswalk markings to provide guidance for pedestrians who are crossing the roadways. And based on field observations, there are definite safety and visibility concerns at the pedestrian crosswalk on North Imperial Avenue between Barioni Boulevard and 9th Street. The mitigation measures, options, and costs, the removal of the existing striping is $1,000. Area improvements, so there would be no parking signs or 50 feet red curb removal of three parking spaces. That would be a 
$2,141. Rectangular rapid flashing beacons for the pedestrian crosswalk system would be about $17,732, um, as well as two ADA ramps for a total of $13,000. Staff recommendation is based on the findings. We recommend the removal of the crosswalk on North Imperial Avenue between Barioni Boulevard and 9th Street. Question. Yes. So oh, we're going to get rid of the stripes and we're going to go and spend $33,000 to remove those. So you have two options. The oh, option those are one. Two options? Correct. Okay, I'm sorry. So, I apologize. So we're going to say, get rid of, okay, so we're totally going to get rid of the stripes and we're, we're not going to put in the ADA all like that because if we didn't get rid of it, we'd have to go and spend $30,000. plus thousand. That is correct. Take that amount and include it. Okay. Good, good. Not, only, not, only, not only the cost, but also uh, we will be removing three parking spaces. And people don't want that. They pass the business. They need it. That is correct. Okay. Right. Options. No more questions. Um, I just want to point out at least some reasoning behind this. Um, I don't think we have anything. We're not drawing anything from the east side of that street to the left side of the street. We used to have a post office, so then, you know, we had foot traffic. At this point, we don't really host anything there. Everybody drives up to the 76, to the convenience store, whatever, 76, right? Um, so there's really no need for it. Uh, in my in my consideration of this is, uh, I mean, if we were drawing businesses, if we, we, we were drawing uh, lots of foot traffic there, then I would say, yeah, well, you know what, let's invest into that part of town and we add this investment. Everything, the, the ADA ramps and and um, the lights and, and, and the bells and whistles. Um, but in this case, I mean, um, there's there's nothing there yet. I, I, I stand with the recommendation and that's remove the striping um, and we'll cross that crossing later on down the road you know, when we have something to offer um, and justifies spending $33,000. I mean, I think at this point, just cut our losses and remove the striping. And, and I mean, generally, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's an inconvenience for the for the shop owners, for the employees that park across the street. Um, but then at the same time, you know, they also note that they're losing parking spots. So it's, it's one or the other. And in this case, for the city, for the overall city, um, I think it's best to just remove the striping. That's you my reason. Choose, you have to choose safety over convenience. I think in this, because it is hard to see the pedestrians walking across the street there. I mean, me just going to check this part out, it was someone popped out in front of me. So I can totally see why it is. It's definitely a hazard for pedestrians. Is that bus stop that's on the other side of um, the former post office still in service? That bus, okay. Just wondering that. Okay. I'm I'm in favor of removing that striping. Quick question. Um, what's the distance between that crosswalk and the stoplight? Because there's crosswalks at the stop. Uh, well, yeah, there the is. The stop yeah. signs. Sorry, not stoplight because it's signs, right? I I don't know. Ex but it's just as you said, it's a bit inconvenient, but, but we're but we're priority it. it's not that far, right? Correct. It's a, we're prioritizing safety yeah. here. I think that the bus stop is approximately like right in the middle of both the right, the corner mm -hmm. intersection and that intersection. All motion to approve um the removal of pedestrian crosswalk on North Imperial Avenue between Barioni and uh, Boulevard and 9th Street. Do I have a second? Oh, uh, I second that. I apologize. Roll call. <clears throat> Commissioner Terraza Spaxter. Yes. Commissioner Avadi. Yes. Vice Chairperson Rivera. Yes. Chairman Harvey. Yes. Motion carries for zero. Moving on to reports, we'll start with commissioner's reports. 
uh, Commissioner Abadi. This is just uh, a curious question. When are they going to finish the landscaping on Aiden Road, west of the bush tree? They planted the trees late spring, early summer. That was it. So, if you're talking about improvements, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they didn't finish the landscaping. They did it for um, the first, uh, I, I wouldn't call it a block, but between Blazing Star Trail and the next street. But after that, they planted some trees all the way. The trees are doing okay, but they didn't plant any shrubs like they did in the first section. I don't. They have no I, plans. I, I, no, well, there are there are plans. I can't speak to what those plans are, yeah. uh, but that's just um, a question. Uh, once upon a time, uh, I did have a conversation with Parks. They have a schedule both for the improvement in between La uh all the way to Aiton. If you notice on the south side of Aiton, there are areas that need some attention uh, with respect to additional planting, and there is a schedule for that. And I think some of that was going to occur after the heat of the summer, so I think there's going to be some additional. You've also noticed, I'm sure, that that with the rains that we had, the, the grass is really uh, growing. We can't, we can't get grass to grow in our parks, but they are thriving yes. in those yeah. parkways. Yeah, I think it's the, the soil. Uh, uh, and so... <laughs> So parks also is is addressing that they're trying to find a way to stay ahead of all, all of that. Yeah. So um, Aiton is certainly on uh, uh, their agenda to to uh, pay some attention to it, both with respect to new planning and maintaining uh, and getting yeah. rid of uh, the grass that's there. I'll make a note to uh, get the schedule that uh, Mr. Lopez had previously provided me and make sure that. You all get that. Commissioner Terrasa. Uh, no reports. I'm sad I missed out on the state of the city over the weekend. I apologize. I couldn't go. Uh, my daughter had a performance that I needed to support, but uh, I heard great things. I'm glad to hear it all went well. And so look forward to your guys' next signature event as well. Vice Chair Rivera. Yeah, um, how are we coming along with the uh, the tearing down of that uh, the remnants of that abandoned subdivision over there on uh, La Brucherie between Aiton and Joshua Tree? The La Fuente. Yeah, the La Fuente. Thank yeah. you. Um, so it's moving um, slowly but surely. That's going to be uh, all the way down to uh, to dirt again. Uh, that well, is yeah. The well, the goal and the requirement is to make a difference, whether that be to complete it or to get it done. And so it is a slightly long legal process, but we are diligently working on it to accomplish either goal. Yeah, they demo a couple right now. As far as the owners to get it done, is it? Uh, Council's working with the city manager's office um, and the city attorney. Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. Yeah, through, then we're working through um, our administrative process and legal process to get that accomplished oh, through the yeah. owners. There's a few different owners, but we've, we've started it, and oh, those offices working hard on it as well. So. Is there like a monitoring so we don't have the people, the street people taking up residence? Now the weather's cooler, and we can have another fire. Yes, we have code enforcement uh, doing inspections. Checking, checking. checking that is so correct. when they so go they start checking trash cans, they can stop by there. Yeah, the yeah. Um, if you you drive by the at least three homes that that were on fire, they're they're down now. Um, they're working on the south side of, of uh, that that street, so um, it's moving. Did you guys have check? Mm -hmm. They they were now. Um, they demo the roof on one, um, so they're moving towards towards the west. I'm just I'm just asking. It's it's been. 17 months since we last talked about that and that was before the fire and I just want the refresher on the on all the all the hands that were involved in doing that and again now with the signature events I just want to be ready for the questions that are come and put it on record um, I do like the uh, this happened some time ago I had not said anything about it um, the fencing on long La and threshold 
the, the uh, privacy slat, the replacement for the brick wall we have back over there, headed towards the um, uh, uh, the fencing for the retention. Yeah, for the retention over there. So that project is, is yeah, it's is it's complete. done. But right. I really like the way I, I like the way it the finished product was. Many. Yes, I'm complimenting. Ah. Yeah, that was that was. <laughs> We're not used to it. <laughs> that's, 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 that was that was some time ago. That was some time ago, well, and I, I passed. Yeah. I, I passed. I passed by there every day. <laughs> and and Com it, it was on my list of things to. <laughs> That's what happens with local government. We're not used to compliments. So. I was waiting you for, the, make it for the... No, 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 that's... We're used that's, to the complaints, not the compliments. You gotta put the thumbs up in the little Zoom thing. There just had to be a butt. Nope, no, there was no butt. There was no butt. There was no butt. If, if the only thing I bring today is, is a, a, an applause, a pat on the back, then so be it. But that's what that was. Uh, what, is, what is the next signature event? Do we have it in November? Or is it until December? We have it until no, December. Then. We, we did have this, this uh, trunk tree, which is not going to be rolled out until December. Next, next one, one we get. Yeah. Oh, okay. We did have a fantastic trunk for, for this weekend. It was elbow to elbow. So, and do we give out more of the, the compost buckets? About 85. How many more do we have? We bought 600, so I believe we have about 300 left. Can we just start? <laughs> A little flyers? Any just line, Xerox copy any flyers? Line, so. I have it. Perfect. I see, I see I'm, I'm trying to push the, the project, you. too. I'm, I'm trying. I feel so bad for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Is, um, and um, that's all I got. The only thing is uh, for everybody, uh, last high school football game for the Imperial Tigers against Southwest. Uh, not to be overshadowed. Um, I know because everybody's look, talking about bell games and stuff, but don't forget the, the boys out on the field for the for the Imperial, the pride of Imperial, their high school football players. Good luck against uh, Southwest. Um, that's all I have for tonight. It's Friday. It's Friday. Um, for me, again, just another compliment for the signature event this weekend. It was really well, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people showing up, especially for the state of the city with ma the mayor. I saw a lot of uh, uh, people there from the county board of supervisors and other councils from across the county and commission. So it was nice to see all that support for her and for our city there. And uh, that's what I have for tonight. What about staff? I, there, you have a meeting, your regular meeting occurs the day before Thanksgiving. And so there was, there, we, uh, we, there may, at this point, we're not sure whether or not we're going to have an item or not. Uh, but we'll plan accordingly if, if you're pretty sure at this point that we won't have a quorum the day before Thanksgiving. So we wanted to make that inquiry. You know, a lot of people travel before Thanksgiving. So, if if you, if you know, you know, uh, Commissioner Winkler's not here, but if you know you're going to be out of town, we and we, we may not have a quorum, then we would we'll plan according. But if you think you're going to be here, we'll be here. I would like to suggest to plan on not having a meeting then and, and just push it over because some, some people, people travel, travel the day before and they're exhausted preparing. Yeah. The goodies for the next day. So, um, for my I side, probably won't be here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Unless there's an urgent Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a fire. <laughs> so, I think it's probably we die. die. Okay. Also, uh, from a staff yeah. standpoint, the, the state of the city was seemingly very well received. It should be up on our website. So, for those folks who missed it, uh, within the next few days, it should be available to view uh, on our website or social media platforms. Um, one of the things to think about for some upcoming meetings is, is I w would like to, as part of your regular meetings, have a few sessions 
to uh, either uh, uh, refresh uh, with respect to uh, uh, Brown Act th and things like that, pu the public hearings, uh, uh, and things like that. So uh, you might, you should expect to see a few minutes as part of your regular meetings as we go forward some discussion about that. Uh, so if there is anything in particular that you would like to see as part of that, you should feel free to let us know. Okay, we would send that directly to, to you? That'd be fine. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> that being said, I'd like to adjourn this Planning Commission meeting until the next regularly scheduled meeting, November 8th at 6.30 p.m.